This is the Northampton platform meeting. Um, it's part of a network of hearings and meetings that are going on across the entire state. Um, as everybody knows, I'm, I'm not going to rehash all of this, but as everybody knows, there's a platform convention June 3rd in Worcester, and the state Democratic Party will be deciding on a new platform. We're here tonight to give input into what we would like the platform to say. We have tonight a special guest, Nancy Stenberg. Nancy, yes. Nancy hails all the way from East Hampton. <laughs> and she is on the state committee and the platform committee. So in a minute, um, I'm going to ask her to say a few words to everybody. Uh, before that, I wanted to introduce the cast of characters up here. Um, this is Catherine Kay. Catherine. Yeah. Yes, fan club. Um, Catherine is the vice chair for Ward 5 in Northampton and will be taking notes tonight. Also up here is Patty Healy. Patty is the secretary for the, oh yes, sorry. Uh, Patty is the secretary for the Northampton Democratic City Committee. Um, we have a number of city councilors here with us. Could you raise your hand? So, um, let's see. Uh, Maureen Carney is here. I know Ryan's here somewhere. Ryan's over there. Uh, GL uh, from Ward 4 is at the table. And our esteemed mayor and also state committee member, David Narkowitz, is here. Oh. And can everybody wish David a happy birthday? Tomorrow's his birthday. Okay. Okay. Oops, sorry. Mary Ann, where's Mary Ann? Mary Ann, Ward 6. Where are you? Where are you? I thought she was here. She was here. Okay. Oh, there she is. And Jim Nash, where are you, Jim? We've got, hey, this is great. We've got most of Northampton represented. This is wonderful. Thank you. Um, I also want to introduce uh, Chad Furman. Chad is going to be our timekeeper tonight. Can you stand up, Chad? And you might want to come up and join us. Um, he's got the hardest job here tonight because he's going to tell you that you need to top, stop talking when it's time to stop talking. Um, NCTV is here tonight, Northampton Community Television. They are recording this. It's not live, but it will be up on a link uh, probably tomorrow. So thanks to them. And if anybody wants to watch the proceedings uh, again, or uh, if they didn't make it tonight, they'll be able to do that. Uh, one housekeeping, we are responsible for taking down the chairs at the end. We would be very grateful for your help. Uh, the chairs are somewhere around the, the racks that they all go on, so please help us. Okay, so um, any other housekeeping, anybody? Okay, um, so the way things are going to work tonight, unless you wanted to say something before we plunged into that? No, why don't you, why don't you say... It's informal. This is an unofficial hearing. So um, let, me, let me turn the mic to Nancy and give us a hello. Well, thank you very much. Um, thanks to Elizabeth for inviting me. And thank you to everybody for coming out tonight, um, seeing some familiar faces and a lot of new faces. And we are delighted about that. So uh, as Elizabeth said, I'm from East Hampton. I've been on the state committee for 11 years. This is my third time on a platform committee. I was on the 2013 committee, and I was on the DNC platform committee last year, and now I'm on this committee. So we are having hearings until the first week of May. Then we will all, the whole platform committee will meet in the second week of May and draft the platform and, you know, It'll be your typical, we'll all be together, there's 30 of us, and we'll be together in a large room, and there'll be some arguing and gnashing of teeth and tearing out of hair and all that kind of stuff. And then, how many of you are delegates? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Then we will get the, um, you know, the platform out for all of you to look at, and then you can gnash your teeth and tear your hair out and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, then you go to the convention and vote on it. And if, um, 
you know, something you want is not in there, you'll have to go try to get it in there through an amendment process. Um, delegate trainings are happening. Um, the Our Revolution group is sponsoring one next week in Springfield, so if you're on our email list, you'll get an email about that, hopefully tomorrow, if, you know, I have my time enough to get it out. And um, I'll make sure that that gets onto the 413 Action Together list. And that, in a nutshell, is what we are all about and how we are revitalizing our democracy here in... Hampshire County, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, she's put in endless hours on so many things, including the National Democratic Platform, so thank you for all your great work. Um, so tonight, if you're gonna be testifying, this is how we're going to be working this. I hope that most of you who are testifying, if not all of you, have already picked up a form, first from Catherine and now from GL. It is a cover sheet that we're asking you to complete please do that legibly. Um, we're, we need to submit your comments to the platform committee and we need to know who you are. And that goes not just for one person in a group but the whole group. We have decided to give priority tonight to groups that are testifying that have gotten together to work out language together um, to go first. So um, we will give groups three minutes, and we will record your comments as if there are that many people as there are in the group making that comment. So if a group of 10 people gets up and talks about the arts, all 10 of you will count as a comment. This will save us time and will save a lot of repetition, you know, what she said, what she said, what she said. Um, so we will ask first the groups, not yet, but when we, when we get started, we'll ask all the groups to come up to the microphone on that side and line up, have one spokesperson, and you'll have three minutes, okay? After that, individuals will be able to testify. We're asking individuals to stick to a minute and a half. Again, you'll need a cover sheet. If you have your comments in writing, that's wonderful. We would love them. If you don't, that's fine. We will take notes. Um, the three of us will be taking notes, so Speak clearly, don't be afraid, we're all friends and family here. Um, Chad, as I said, is gonna be the gatekeeper here on the timing. I also wanna turn your attention to this website. You probably can't see it from where you are, but this is, there's an online website for submitting testimony. If you don't wanna speak tonight, if we don't get to you tonight, we probably will, given the numbers here aren't that great. But, if you want to submit other testimony or you know people who want to submit testimony, please go to this website. I'm, you can come up and look at it. I don't want to just bore you with what it is, but it's also on the massdems.org website. You'll find it under their platform menu. So you can submit testimony that way as well. As Nancy mentioned, there's the convention on June 3rd. The draft platform which is going to be put together after all of the hearings across the state, will be released somewhere around May 19th to May 22nd. That doesn't leave a whole lot of time between the platform coming out and the actual convention. You know, at most a couple of weeks and probably a little bit less. What that means is, once it's out, we're gonna have to get it out to everybody, not just the delegates, but all of you that are participating and care about what the platform says. And we have scheduled a meeting here, I believe, in this, in this room on May 24th, which should be ample time to be sure that the, platform, the draft platform is out. Right, Nancy? Yes. Okay. So that will be another opportunity for people to come together to take a look at the platform, the draft platform, and strategize to see whether or not you are happy with what's in it or if you feel it's important to try to change it at the convention. By that time also, we seem to be serenaded by the band practice here, isn't this nice? Um, by that time, we don't yet know what the procedure will be for how to amend the platform. We have a basic idea, but there are, there are details um, that won't be clear until after April 29th, um, when the whole state committee meets to 
uh, take a vote on the rules for how the convention will go forward. So mark May 24th on your calendar. We'll have the draft platform. We'll know what the procedure is, and we can all get back together to figure out what we need to do to make sure that the platform that we want will happen at the convention. Okay? All right, so, yes, Susan. Um, so if you, we want to stand with more than one group. Go for it. Do we need a cover sheet for each group? There should be a cover sheet for each group, and you can sign on to multiple groups. But our personal paper that will be submitted with the group saying we support that. I, I, no, I think you can put all your names on one sheet, okay? If you want to do that, you can fill out multiple sheets. We have plenty of them. So as long as your name appears somewhere with that group's testimony, um, then it's fine. And as I said, you can be part of multiple groups. Um, we might even take a hand count. Let's see how that works after a group testifies, because you may be hearing their testimony for the first time. You may not have had the opportunity to work with these groups and organize on their language, but you might want to weigh in on it. So if that's the case, we'll take your hand count as well. But we want to make sure we get your names. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually here from Southampton Democrats, and a group prepared my comments, so I'm going to stay with the group, is that okay? That's fine. That's great. OK. So anything else? before we start. All right, if groups want to come down to the mic here and we'll just go one at a time. Um, the time, just to explain the timing factor, green is speak. Um, and feel free to keep speaking. Yellow means uh, for the groups that you have one minute or 30 seconds. Why don't we do 30 seconds? One minute. All right. The, the yellow is you have one minute, and then the red is stop talking. Okay? <laughs> All right. Let's go. Hi, my name is Dana Salisbury. I am proposing a plank in support of the arts and humanities. Massachusetts Democrats believe public investment in the arts and humanities is vital to the building and sustaining of vibrant, diverse communities in the Commonwealth and is essential to the cultivation and appreciation of our rich heritage and civic culture. Michelle Obama reminds us that, quote, the arts and humanities define who we are as a people, unquote. In addition to its intangible benefits, support for the arts and humanities has real economic benefits. In 2016, Massachusetts supported more than 62,000 jobs. And in 2011, the last, num last year we have confirmed figures for, spent $2.1 billion annually and generated another $2.5 billion in economic activity. With the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities imperiled by Republican agendas for the federal budget, Massachusetts must lead in valuing the crucial inheritance and social benefits that the arts and humanities play in enhancing our quality of life and our abilities to understand the world. We support the arts and humanities not only for cultural enrichment, but to support democracy itself. Specifically, Massachusetts Democrats support Increasing, increases in funding for Mass Cultural Council and Mass Humanities for programming at all levels, from individual grants to institutional support, celebrating and promoting cultural and artistic diversity, encouraging participation in all types of art, public art events and performances, encouraging and providing support for attendance at museums and diverse cultural institutions, Encouraging public knowledge and productive discourse about our diverse cultures, robust achievements, and problematic histories through arts and humanities events and programs. Restoring arts and humanities efforts at all educational levels, including legislation to develop arts inclusion into ongoing STEM initiative, making it STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Promoting multimedia public broadcasting, and including community-based public radio and public access television. Promoting the arts as a major employer and industry by recognizing the importance of creative workers to the Massachusetts economy. Involving artists in the planning and implementation process of artistic endeavors. 
developing policies and funding sources for maintaining and developing housing and workspaces for artists, and finally, building on and promoting the Commonwealth's reputation as a center of creativity and innovation, including architecture, design, and the many categories of fine and performing arts. <laughs> the, first, the first time I've been able to read it in less than three minutes. Hi, this group is representing democracy, gender, and voting rights. The Women's March on January 21st proved that women in our state are highly engaged in our political process and committed to supporting policies that give everyone in our state opportunities to succeed. People who identify as women are an economic powerhouse in Massachusetts. The platform must reflect women's power and perspective throughout its entirety. In the 2013 version, the women's section at the end feels like a patronizing afterthought that serves mostly to highlight outdated gender stereotypes. Women are not a special interest group. We are fully half the population and our concerns are everyone's concerns. Research from many organizations has shown that when women are successful, so are men, children, families, communities, businesses, and our economy. Indeed, a McKinsey report from last year showed that enabling a truly female-friendly workplace in Massachusetts would boost our GDP by an extra $73 billion by 20, 2025. It's equivalent to the economy of New Hampshire. In the 2017 platform, we'd like to see the women's plank removed completely and the following policies promoted in the appropriate flanks, planks where they fit. Education, um, I'm just going to say the planks. Education, business, and the workplace, healthcare, criminal justice reform. When women, when women and girls have opportunities to achieve a high educational level, to be fully included in the workplace, to stay in the workforce after having children, to make the appropriate health choices for their own bodies, then they can and will reach their full potential. This isn't a zero-sum game. Research shows that gender equity benefits men just as much as women. Most importantly, so will Massachusetts. For our preamble, we'd like to propose the following. Massachusetts Democrats believe in the fundamental goodness of humanity. We believe that all people have the innate desire to be good and do good in their families, community, and the larger world. Our government is a tool to help all people living in Massachusetts attain their full potential. We want to create a state where everyone has the opportunity to succeed, where children and families can thrive, where jobs are created and drive innovation, where we protect the health of our residents and our earth and climate, and where there's social and economic justice for all, no matter what you look like, where you came from, who you love, or how you worship. Our government must uphold the fundamental rights guaranteed to us in the U.S. Constitution and create equal opportunities for all. We believe that our actions and solutions must be guided by evidence-based research and take into account the effects on all stakeholders. And we believe that by creating an inclusive state that leverages our diversity, we can work together to build up our government, com communities, economic, economy, and families. Um, and we have su some suggested planks, strengthen our democracy, achieve social and economic justice for all, support lifelong development and growth through education, keep our residents healthy, create an economy where everyone thrives and care for our earth and climate. Lastly, voting rights. Massachusetts Democrats believe that every step should be taken to ensure that all eligible citizens are able to exercise their voting rights in every election. We will facilitate the identification of individuals who need support to exercise their right to vote and those who can, can provide such su support increase voting opportunities by extending voting hours and days, including weekends, enabling automatic registration when applying for a driver's license or other state-issued ID, and enabling same-day registration, and prevent the implementation of new and unnecessary requirements to vote. Thank you. I'm Cindy Palmer. I'm actually from Southampton. This is from the Southampton Democrats. It's a group. Uh, four of us put this together. It's uh, related to the Health and Human Services platform. The vision of this is that Massachusetts Democrats believe that a healthy, informed citizenry will result in individuals and families who can contribute to a strong workforce and the general welfare in our commonwealth. We support enactment of a health care system which is exceptional and towards which the entire U.S. can aspire. We support policies which promote timely, financially affordable, scientifically and technologically current, cost-effective, non-discriminatory, and geographically convenient access to evidence-based health education as well as preventive, acute, rehabilitative, long-term, and end-of-life health care prenatally through death. Towards that end, these are, these are the planks. Um, health education, which, ad which addresses good health practice, 
including early identification of disease, prevention of chronic diseases and disabilities, and unintended pregnancies, and personal accountability. We support preventive care and health screening by primary care physicians or mid-level professionals, consistent with recognized professional guidelines per medical history, age, and body system. We support the implementation of comprehensive women's health care services convenient to the woman and with consideration for her social circumstances, respect for the woman's right to choose regarding an unintended pregnancy. We support improved funding and programming of mental health service systems which address early recognition of acute and ongoing behavioral, emotional, substance abuse, neurological injuries, and psychiatric diagnoses and for focuses on prevention as well as crisis management and ongoing treatment. We support pharmaceuticals which will be prescribed within evidence-based guidelines and the cost of each medication will be equivalent with what is paid in other developed countries. We support the recognition of the inherent needs of the disabled and aging population and provision of services which enhance healthy living, long-term independence, and dignity. We support consideration of individuals and their families and support units as end-of-life approaches with recognition of one's right to choose comfort over treatment, death with dignity over ongoing medical intervention. And we can support the continuous modification and improvement of our existing health care system with the goal of an eventual actualization of a single-payer system. Okay. Hello. Yes, of course. I'm Elliot Fratkin. I'm from Northampton, and I'm speaking for the group that met to discuss the energy and the environment platform, and that includes Fred Bedal, Barry Roth, uh, Chris Pine, and um, Kim Boas. And this is what we came up with. The preamble, to protect human rights to clean air, water, health, and environment, we recognize the impact of climate change on our economy and our democratic values. We assert that environmental protection is not antithetical to economic development and that Massachusetts can and should take leadership in the country for leadership in energy and environment. We propose the following. One, develop carbon pricing and rebate to reduce consumption of fossil fuels. Two, Increase the budget of the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection and Department of Conservation and Recreation, which have been shrinking. Three, set statewide clean car standards for fuel consumption. Four, make Massachusetts the innovator in wind and solar and renewable energy. Increase subsidies and tax incentives for green energy development while protecting environmental, farmland, and natural areas. Five, develop and promote rail and hybrid public transportation. Six, promote environmental justice by expanding access to renewable energy in low-income areas and employment in renewable energy production and installation. Thank you. My name is Martin Schatz, I'm from Cummington, and 10 people contributed to this statement and a number of people have signed on. Uh, this is a discussion of a peace plank for the um, platform. We address this committee at a moment when the American people urgently need a democratic party that will take an intelligent, courageous, and moral position on questions of peace and war. We believe that the Massachusetts Democratic Party can play a role in having a strong peace plank in its state platform. With this in mind, we offer the following. As peace is the order that flows from social, economic, environmental, and political justice, so too is peace necessary to achieve justice in all these areas. President Eisenhower warned us of the undue influence and danger of the military-industrial complex. Martin Luther King, calling for a revolution in our values, warned us that a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. And President Kennedy, in his important American University speech, 
rejected the notion that peace, rejected the notion of peace as a Pax Americana enforced on the world by American weapons of war, rejected ideas which demonized other nations and their leaders. He called on Americans to, quote, to re-examine our own attitudes as individuals and as a nation, unquote, and to recognize that people everywhere have a common link in that they, quote, we all inhabit this small planet, we all breathe the same air, we all cherish our children's futures, and we are all mortal. We urge the Massachusetts Democratic Party to acknowledge the following. In a globalized and integrated world, war is counterproductive and only makes positive solutions to urgent problems more difficult to achieve. Efforts to dominate and control events through threat of violence and use of violence contribute to greater instability and insecurity. Nuclear weapons are instruments of mass destruction which threaten all life on this planet. Preparations for war drain our society of material and moral resources. Military activities are one of the single greatest sources of pollution and damage to our environment. Increasing militarism, which currently directs our foreign policy, also is a problem in our domestic culture. True national security can only be achieved through cooperation, unity, respect, trust, and compassion in local, state, national, and international arenas. Thus, we call on the Democratic Party to include a peace plank in its platform, which inspires the public and its representatives to press for immediate ceasefires in all theaters of war and negotiations for the peaceful resolution of the differences cause, causing these wars. Demand as required by the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty negotiations to eliminate all nuclear weapons. Foster step-by-step -step reductions of all weapon systems through international agreements and verifiable inspections. Seek reductions in the US military budget and a redirection of our energies and material resources to meeting human and environmental needs. Allocate specific resources to assist workers displaced by military budget cuts. Create an organization of national service dedicated to peaceful and ecologically restorative pursuits, including repairing damage resulting from war. Discourage military exercises whose sole purpose is to entertain the public or to display power and whose result is needless environmental pollution. Reject all pro-war propaganda. Direct the Department of Education to foster peace studies at all elementary and secondary school levels and, revert, and demand that the U.S. Congress establish a federal cabinet-level Department of Peace whose responsibility will entail implementing the above policies. Hi, my name is Jonathan Schmidt. Uh, I'm from East Hampton. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of a group that has been working to revise the education plank. Uh, it's very much a work in progress. Um, in fact, I've just met more folks this evening who are passionate about this effort. Uh, so we will be uh, continuing to work on the language that we hope to propose. However, uh, this is uh, part of our concern. Massachusetts Democrats believe that all citizens should have access to high quality public education from birth through adulthood. We believe that our educators and the role they play in shaping the future of the Commonwealth deserve the respect and support warranted by such great influence. As such, we choose to trust the expertise of our educators and draw from their experience when determining how to best assess the proficiency of their students. Additionally, we seek to be aware of strategies implemented in other states as well as in nations across the world so that we may incorporate proven methods into our own state's public education. Uh, we recognize that the rapid rise of technology will indelib indelibly alter the ways in which humans are able to interact with their communities, both locally and globally. We believe that in order to truly prepare students for the 21st century, we must pursue a flexible system of education that provides for the various ways in which students learn and then confer what they learn. We support the natural curiosity of children in order to foster a culture that cherishes knowledge and views learning as a gateway to self-fulfillment as opposed to a rigid set of instructions for life. Some of the specific points that we hope to include in this are a uh, focus on student growth and varied learning styles as opposed to the high stakes testing that puts undue and unhealthy pressure on both students and teachers. 
public school curricula developed within the context of our information abundant society, diminishing the requirement of memorization in favor of learning how to think creatively and critically. We support uh, including arts education in addition to the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education already supported by the platform. We hope to see new uh, fields of study incorporated into the uh, basic education given to uh, our students. Uh, the current platform already mentions civics education so that future generations are prepared to engage with our democracy in an informed and meaningful way. We would suggest that we also support a philosophy education uh, so that students learn how to effectively assess the merits of an argument or an idea, as well as the ability to develop a sound argument of their own. We'd also like to see mindfulness practices shared with students, including meditation, as an integral part of the school day so that students may learn to achieve calmness and manage their emotions, which will promote a better learning environment within each individual classroom. I guess that's that. Hello, my name is Michael Horaham, an alternate delegate for Ward 2 here in Northampton, um, representing a number of signatories here to present our ideas regarding economic opportunity. Massachusetts Democrats recognize the urgent need for an economy that works for everybody. We are the party that champions entrepreneurship, innovation, fairness, and sustainability. We support, emphasizing the importance of small business and local economies, paid family leave for all Massachusetts workers, keeping pace with our neighboring states and every country around the world, excepting the US and Papua New Guinea, <laughs> raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour in order to combat persistent income inequality, fair and inclusive workplaces for women, people of color, LGBTQI, and immigrants, understanding that diversity is a business advantage, leveraging a multitude of experiences, skills, and perspectives to grow our economy. More state investment for underserved communities, including the development of public-private par partnerships. Preparing for an automated future, understanding that though new technology will lead to innovation, it can also displace workers who will need retraining, job placement, and a social safety net that responds to the needs of a modern economy. Vocational training, apprenticeships, and increased incentives for adult education to boost durable skills for workers. Piloting forward-thinking policies such as universal basic income in order to raise living standards for all. Investments in infrastructure that will provide our state with a competitive advantage for attracting new jobs. And finally, a tax code that helps the poor and middle class and requires corporations and the rich to pay their fair share. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Karen McGowan. I'm a first time delegate from Williamsburg. And I've been working with a committee of five other people on healthcare and human services. Massachusetts Democrats believe that healthcare is a human right and a moral imperative, so that every person enjoys a good quality of life, great health, and well being. We believe that high quality and affordable healthcare should be available to all through a single-payer, government-sponsored program like Medicare, regardless of employment or economic status. The Democratic Party must work to eliminate racial, socio-ethnic, socio-economic, and regional health disparities. Additions to the platform. Massachusetts Democrats believe that all citizens should be able to access public health care coverage through a single-payer public option. We will fight any attempts in Congress to privatize, voucherize, or phase out Medicare as we know it. We will oppose any plans to slash funding and block grant Medicaid, which will harm millions of people. We believe we should have a comprehensive benefit package that includes trauma-informed medical and mental health care, dental coverage, eye care, hearing care including hearing aids, alternative medical practices such as acupuncture, alternatives to nursing home care, and assistance for aging in place. We should have access to reduced prescription drug prices and recognize the addition, addiction 
crisis within our state and have a responsibility to help by providing funding for treatment and recovery. Thank you very much. Yes? I have to. Uh, my name is Barry Roth. I've worked with a group on the preamble and the statement of values. Uh, there were quite a few people involved, but I'm too nervous to come up with all the names right now. Um, we came up with a statement of values and a preamble that was involved more with a process than it was with uh, specific issues. We felt that one of the complaints that uh, Bernie, um, Bernie uh, supporters had about the prior process was that it wasn't, it, w it was kind of tilted and it was, and we wanted to make sure that we put together something that was going to assure openness to everyone. And the fr so we open up our, uh, incidentally, I have copies of, of the Statement of Values and Preamble and I'll be happy to give it to anybody who wants a hard copy. But we opened up by saying that our statement of values includes being open to all ideas, that we are not so perfect that what we think is right is necessarily right. We believe it, we, and we're going to work our best to do what we think is right. But we always have to keep a little humility in mind and remember that other people have different views and respect those views and be open to hearing to what they have, have to say. So that was our statement of values, and someone called us on it in our document when we kind of um, criticized someone else inadvertently. So we wanted it to be all positive. And at that point, I'm going to read from, well, Chris Pine uh, was one of the contributors, and he wrote a, a good deal about it. And what he specific, uh, specifically said was, we don't want to be talking about what separates us. What we want to talk about is what we all have in common a common interest and outline those values that we have in common rather than creating a litany of, special, uh, of specific interests within the statement of values and the preamble. And we have done that. The other thing is one of the, one of the issues, uh, we, uh, as part of that fear, there's a fear to speak about certain issues. We talk about climate control. But the issue of human population growth, which is every bit as important, uh, hasn't been discussed. And people, people um, are afraid to talk about it. And that needs to be discussed. Um, so that is essentially a, a summary. I, will, I, I think we've put together a really nice document. And I hope you will consider supporting it. And I will be happy to pass it on to anybody who is interested. Thank you. I'm Evelyn Bloom, and I'm a delegate from Ward 7. And we, uh, several of us, have put together another approach to a preamble um, with a, a desire to be a little bit more specific and to introduce the areas of interest for the Democratic Party for, God forbid, somebody doesn't make it all the way through the whole plank the whole list of blanks. So we want somebody to get an idea what the Democratic Party stands for in the preamble of the state. The preamble of the Massachusetts Democratic Party is a statement of our principles for the people of Massachusetts, Democratic Party leaders and members, our elected officials, and candidates who seek our endorsement. Massachusetts Democrats believe that government plays a vital role in the lives of individuals and communities. We believe in the equality and inherent dignity of all persons. We believe that our state and national government must protect the rights to freedom of expression and assembly, equality of opportunity, equal access to employment and public facilities, the right to high quality public education, the right to quality health care for all, the availability of affordable housing, and equal access to the judicial process and the ballot box, and a fair and equitable tax system for the benefit of all residents. 
The democratic platform depends on resolutely defending these American values, which support every individual's hopes and dreams for the future. We will work with elected officials, activists, and our communities to achieve this vision in our government. The platform to achieve these goals is presented below in a series of planks that embody these crucial principles for our residents, our elected officials, and those who seek public office. There are 10 people, there were several of us working on this tonight, Nine. there are currently 10 signatures on this document. Hello, I'm Barbara Magnuson, Chair of the South Hadley Democratic Town Committee, and members of my committee, our committee, are here tonight. Our environmental working group has made a proposal fully endorsed by our membership. The 2013 Massachusetts Democratic Platform on Energy and Environment supports the right to clean water. It was adopted around the same time that in Michigan, the chain of events began that led to the drinking water disaster in Flint. Flint highlighted for all of us the critical need for ongoing monitoring and immediate abatement of contamination of the water supply, particularly to protect children, who are especially vulnerable to the effects of lead exposure. Current monitoring and action across the Commonwealth is uneven. Bills are pending in the Massachusetts legislature to monitor, identify, and take action and provide affected communities with full information. The current general platform language that supports clean water and maintaining water infrastructure in good repair is not sufficient to prevent crises like Flint and to be able to respond immediately with, when such emergencies occur. The principle we believe should be added is that Massachusetts Democrats support the right to clean water, including the right to current and accurate information, the right to know about the existence of any lead or other contaminants in the water we drink, and the complete elimination of these contaminants from the water, particularly in all schools and child care facilities. Our communities, our school staff and teachers, our children and their parents and guardians are entitled to no less. Thank you. Good evening. I'll take the prize for the shortest <laughs> presentation here. Um, I am a committee of one and this is something that is very near and dear to my heart and I think might strike uh, a chord with you who have voted in this last election. We, the Massachusetts Democrats, recognize the tireless efforts of our many volunteer, grassroots activists and contributors who work to promote the democratic principles and candidates pursuing local, state, and national offices by respecting their ballot votes in the primary elections and abolishing the present system of overriding superdelegates in the nomination process. We trust our people. We see the superdelegate system as being akin to the electoral college votes that have denied high office to several of our popularly chosen candidates in recent years. I am Lee Tonette, Ward 6, Northampton. I, I didn't get your name, excuse me. It's on here. Oh, okay. Um, is that it for the groups? Are we done with the groups? Okay. Uh, back again. Wait, 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 hang on, Barry. What? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, um, I, I think we're ready to move on to the individual, is wait, that? Wait, no, no, no. Wait, wait. There's just a lot of people that worked on this. On what? Human population growth. Human what, population what? growth. Um, yeah, you did already mention that in your no, prior. No, I, I did not. 
I did not thank you. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth, or whoever is speaking. Uh, it, re it is a separate issue. It is a separate plank, and and we have every right to address it. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, I think six or seven people signed it right now. Um, I'm holding in my hand a little elephant. It's made of ivory. Probably can't see it. It's a luck charm. It was given to me by someone with a huge heart. And the person gave it to me for luck. But the person had no awareness of, the f of what goes on with the elephant trade and what goes on just in general with other living things on the planet. Because most of us, that's just not what we're interested in. But we share the planet with other living things. And we have to recognize that other living things have a right to exist, period. Then the biggest thing impinging on that is human population growth. And human population growth is an issue that I couldn't find a single person holding office to talk about. The people who talk about it, who were willing to talk about it with me, even some of them who don't hold the office, were afraid to talk about it. But we shouldn't be. There was a time where, where attempts to control human population were brutish. But that is no longer necessary. The world's population has reached 7 billion people. It's scheduled to go very soon to 8 billion people. The Earth cannot handle that. In order to accommodate it, we are destroying the Earth and every other living thing on the planet. Um, it also impacts war. If you look at the causes of war, it is, it is surging population. It's responsible for famine throughout the world. As much as we do to increase, take care, reduce poverty, the human population surges past it. And so that, so that we have more people in poverty today than we started trying to combat it. There are a lot of good means to, to control it. We can empower women. That's the number one thing. Allow them to be educated. Allow them to have inheritance. Allow them not to be beaten by their husbands and so forth. Let them, uh, allow them to work in the workplace and make contraception available to everyone and legalize abortion. That should not, of course, be the, prefer the, preference, the preference. Beyond that, we have to change cultural norms. And we know that many countries have had success in doing that simply by putting out television shows that point out the value in having smaller families. It's had tremendous success in a number of countries. In the US, in other countries, our population used to be surging, but that has been greatly reduced by being made aware of the impact of population. So I, again, I have a document for any, certainly it should be discussed. Climate change doesn't cause human population. Population growth causes climate change. Okay, all right, For um, thank you to all those groups, it was great. Um, all right, are there folks who are gonna wanna testify as individuals, and if so, could you please line up at that mic? Uh, please remember to introduce yourself to us, who you are, and uh, GL, you're gonna be taking the sheets, and we're down to a minute and a half per testimony, so if you can adhere to that, we'd be grateful. Okay, thank you. My name is Karen Lee, and I'm a delegate from Springfield. And be bold, Massachusetts. Be bold, progressives and Democrats, in your selection on what we want to see on this platform. And here is my bold Ad addition to the education plank. Massachusetts Democrats believe free education is a human right. Therefore, public education from universal Childcare, pre-K to higher education through PhD, vocational training should be free for all residents. As such, we hereby affirm that one, no arbitrary cap or means test is appropriate. 
and two, this right shall be extended retroactively through cancellation of existing student debt. One, no arbitrary cap or means test is appropriate. We believe that free education is a human right. If it means all of us, rich or poor, must be afforded the same opportunity without means testing or a cap to qualify. A robust inclusion of every socioeconomic and demographic will ensure that education is indeed a human right for all, and any means testing to a human right is an egregious error and will further divide society. Second, cancellation of student debt. We believe in Massachusetts that education is a human right, then by this statement we acknowledge that it has always been a right, which makes the decades of existing student debt a crime. Cancellation Student debt is the flip side of a free public education. Thus, we must correct this by canceling outstanding educational debt for all residents, former Massachusetts residents who are classified as out of state and attending at college outside of Massachusetts, and three, students who obtain their education at a Massachusetts institu institution. If you agree with this, I have the sheets here I can hand around to submit into testimony, and thank you. Hello, I'm Ann Alexander from Northampton. As Robert Reich, on behalf of Common Cause, wrote a month ago, quote, I'm very worried about our democracy. Just minutes ago, we inched a few steps closer to utter constitutional chaos. Extremists in the states with backing from deep-pocketed corporate front groups like ALEC are calling for an, art, for an Article V convention, which would empower unelected, unaccountable delegates to write their far-ring or far-right wing agenda into our Constitution. Article 5 gives two ways to modify the Constitution. One is to pass an amendment which hasn't been done, I'm sorry, an amendment which has been done successfully 27 times. The other is to call a constitutional convention which hasn't been done since 1787, which requires two-thirds of the states to vote in favor. The magic number is 34 and Arizona just became the 29th state to join the call. As Reich continues, quote, the corporate lobbyists and ideologues behind this effort want to shred environmental regulations, roll back civil rights advances, and enshrine far right wing economics as permanent fiscal policy through a balanced budget amendment. There are no rules or guidelines in the U.S. Constitution that can constrain an Article V convention once it's called. Worst of all, they just need five more states to reach the two-thirds majority required and put all of our most cherished rights on the chopping block. Robert Greenstein, writing in the Washington Post, says, as constitutional experts from the late Chief Justice Warren Burger to Justice Antonin Scalia to Harvard Law School Professor Lawrence Tribe have warned a constitutional convention would place the nation in uncharted territory with very serious risks for our political system. Tribe says it would be putting the whole constitution up for grabs and Scalia said, I certainly wouldn't want a constitutional convention. Whoa, who knows what would come of it. If you haven't heard about this before, it's because this effort has been conducted in a very quiet, surreptitious way. Because I find it an alarming prospect, I'm proposing that we add a line in the preamble that reads, Massachusetts is opposed to a new constitutional convention, believing that individual amendments can be voted on, as they have been many times before. Therefore, we hope to gain cooperation from the leadership of other states after alerting them to this threat to our Constitution. Thank you. Hi, my name is Grover Wayman Brown and I'm a delegate from Ashfield, Massachusetts. I'm going to talk quickly because I'm going to try to get all this in the time frame. First, I have a serious concern with the part of the preamble that reads, we, um, we need safe and crime-free communities because I feel this language is what Ian Haney Lopez calls a dog whistle for racially unequal policing that targets black brown and poor community members. Instead, I recommend a change to the language. We want to live in safe communities that prioritize community investment, conflict resolution, and local leadership, thereby reducing the current over-policing of black and other communities of color. Plank recommendation, moving on, to is um, adding a bullet under the plank of infrastructure. That reads, digital infrastructure should be widely available, particularly in rural areas, and implemented in a way that 
that makes broadband access affordable and community controlled. That's really important to my community. And third, I recommended adding a bullet under the plank of housing that reads, we will work to remove legal penalties and fines associated with living without adequate housing, including fines for sleeping in public, loitering, public urination when no other facilities are available to the person, camping, overnight parking when the car is used for shelter, tresp and trespassing when the person is on a property that is not another person's domicile. Thanks. Hi. Uh, the Democratic Party of Massachusetts believes Republican strategists John Ehrlichman, H.R. Haldeman, and Kevin Phillips, who admit the Republican Southern strategy, a plan to pull racist white Democrats into the Republic Party, Republican Party by, according to Phillips, campaigning primarily on the basis of racial issues using coded black, anti-black rhetoric, anti -black rhetoric in order to win elections. We know as a result of this successful racist strategy, poverty, working, and lower class whites have voted against their own economic self-interest for the past 30 years. Massachusetts Democrats will reference the Southern strategy in our mes message and deta detail the negative effects of our racially polarized electorate. We will confront and denounce the use of racially coded language in political discourse such as law and order, tough on crime, hardworking Americans, and family values. We will object to the sole use of the term middle class in that that usage seeks to pander to the false conflation of poverty and the poverty class to communities of color. Using the term middle class exclusively is racist and divisive. Therefore, the, the party will use the word poverty. The, poverty. the party unequivocally acknowledges party, poverty is the result of one thing and one thing only, public policy. And one could say failed public policy. In uh, 2015, 14 percent of Americans across all racial groups exper experienced living in poverty. The party will confront the false conflation of race and poverty. We will vocally uh, connect the lack of um, adequate social welfare, stagnating wa wages, low minimum wage, lack of single payer health care, weak workplace and worker protections to racism and the success of the Southern strategy. I, I, yeah, I'm uh, Nev Capron, and I'm the ward, one of the four Ward 3 delegates in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for all the great work. Uh, my name is Rami Efal. I'm a delegate from Ward 4. Thank you. And um, I would like to... Um, speak about two planks, and I'm very open to uh, work with people to develop them as groups. So I started them on my own, but please feel free to reach out. Uh, so the first one I wanna um, suggest a, a Native American dedicated plank, and I would love this to uh, describe it like so. We Massachusetts American Democrats have inherited the governance on this land through a history of genocide of the indigenous Mohicans, Mashpi, Massachusetts, Nauset, Nipmuc, Pocomtok, and Wampanoag Native Americans with deep present day consequences. Native Americans' deep connection to this land must be used as guiding spiritual and moral beacon to our state governance. To address this debt of our hearts and past, we call on the following items. Create an indigenous people climate committee to include, involve, and be led by indigenous peoples on climate policy include Native Americans' relations and education in school systems, include Native Americans in the art planks that we just heard, um, and encourage and ensure voting and governance offices roles by Native Americans. And I definitely wanna continue work on this. The other plank um, I would like to introduce um, additions to is the immigration. Um, so if I do it quickly, and just add, we recognize that the immigrants connect U.S. citizens with our larger human family around the world through their distinct languages, cultures, and heritage, and that in itself is a social asset and social capital benefiting the U.S. Pass the Statewide Safe Communities Act, install in-state voting for all taxpayers, including legal alien green card holders, 
train all Port Authority employees in cross-cultural education and relations, amend, simplify, and build on the DREAM Act, D-R-E-A-M, clear articulate limits of collaboration with state police and ICE, issue driver license regardless of immigration status, establish a protocol for the protection of US-born children to undocumented immigrants, which will not risk or expose their parents, and establish protocol to assign caregivers and provide free passport to US-born citizen children to, to be deported non-citizen parents. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lucy Longstreth. I'm the vice chair of Ward 7, and um, I sent out a group text message to my four children who all were educated here and asked them for their input. So this is from my 28-year-old son who works for the National Endowment for Democracy. And I love to say that this is redundant because you've all said it already tonight. But he says, single payer, increased funding for affordable housing, end the war in Yemen, and free university education. And I promised him I would put this out for our democratic platform tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I'm Julie Wells from Ward 4 in Northampton. And I have three points uh, this evening. Uh, one is about framing, um, that I would like to see much of what we've talked about today framed in terms of basic rights, uh, not desires or wishes, but uh, things like affordable health care, uh, quality public education, freedom from hunger, freedom from discrimination and injustice, a clean, safe environment, that these all be called basic rights. That's number one. Uh, number two, I would like to see in um, the platform uh, a, positive, uh, a positive immigration plank that um, condemns the exploitation of immigrants and uh, welcomes uh, those seeking economic opportunities, freedom, and asylum, not just those with uh, needed skills as the previous platform stated. And thirdly, I would like to see a, a commitment to the protection of sanctuary cities and indeed to the commitment of Massachusetts as a sanctuary state. Thank you. Hello, my name is Fred Bedall, I live in Ward 5, Florence, and I would like to speak on a topic which probably nobody else is going to speak about tonight, or any night, which is agriculture, because I work in agriculture and I have for 20 years, and people here may not realize that Northampton is probably one of the top three, four, five towns in the entire state in agriculture. So, but you may also not realize that agriculture is in a crisis, and the crisis is all across all sectors of agriculture, but I want to just mention what I heard a couple days ago, which is that one of maybe two dairy farms that was left in Williamsburg just sold their cows. And the person who told me that was the Deerfield farmer who has been growing the grain for those corns, who now has lost his market for his corn. And the platform that was previously written supported the kind of agriculture that I'm most involved in, which is, you know, groovy organic vegetables, but I would like to presume to speak for the bigger conventional agriculture, which in my view is not evil. Massachusetts is a small state with a tiny agricultural sector, but 95% of that is dairy farms and the grain farms that support them. And we are in danger of losing a huge chunk of our agriculture. So I would like to see the platform support agriculture through this tough time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sarah. I live in Northampton. I'm speaking as somebody who has um, been discouraged from using the healthcare system for years because of the trauma of forced hospitalization and drugging. In light of Congress's recent passage of the 21st Century Cures Act, formerly known as the Murphy Bill, which massively increases federal funding for forcing people to take drugs which frequently have dangerous side effects such as diabetes and Parkinson's-like symptoms, it is more important than ever that the Massachusetts Democratic Party takes a strong stand opposing the use of forths in health treatments. I propose that the healthcare portion of the platform includes something like the following. 
As Massachusetts Democrats, we believe that health care is not care unless it respects the dignity of the individual. Therefore, we strongly oppose the use of force in treatments, including forced drugging, forced hospitalization, and forced electroshock. We support funding for non-coercive alternatives, such as peer respites and community centers. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dennis Desmond. I'm, I'm a uh, delegate from Ward 5. Um, I'm not here with a specific platform proposal, but rather a comment on the platform as a whole. I want to see that it does not suffer from the same problem the 2013 platform had, and that was that it was grammatically erratic. There were, <laughs> to put it kindly, there were phrases that were confusing, unclear, and in one or two cases, incoherent. Um, you know, I, I admit that I'm a grammar nerd. Uh, grammar leads to clarity. Poor grammar leads to a lack of clarity, and we want to avoid that, and it's easily avoidable. Um, I want to suggest that before the final draft is published, that it be reviewed and enhanced by a qualified editor or editors. That's it. <laughs> You'll be happy to know that we have a writer working with us this time, and so I can guarantee you there will be no grammar issues. I think that should have been the last comment, but uh, jo Joan Cox from Hatfield. Um, I did this on the fly. I've never been to a, this kind of meeting before, but uh, we believe that no one should be treated as dispensable to the human race, from refugees fleeing political violence to economic migrants searching for ways to support their families, to American citizens who are unemployed, underemployed, or badly, badly paid. The Massachusetts Democratic Party should include in its platform the intention to create economic, social, and educational policies that instead of pitting dispossessed natives against desperate foreigners, protects and benefits both groups in our state. Thank you. Is there anybody else who wants to testify? Okay. This is fantastic. This is very inspiring. Lots of, I went to the Springfield um, hearing and there's lots of new, creative, interesting things that came out here tonight. Lots of very strong statements, so thank you everybody. Um, we are going to move these um, different positions, planks, around the room. So we can, we can stay here for a while. Um, take your time, this is not a rush, but sign on to, why don't you grab a sheet and you can add it on to any of the platforms that are filled up of, sentence, of, of, of signatures, and we can add them on, and then we'll collect them maybe in about a half an hour. Um, please don't forget the May 24th meeting after the draft platform comes out so that we can sort of meet again and figure out what, if anything, we want to do with respect to the actual language and the convention. And Nancy, if, is there anything else you wanted to add to close this? The question is, what's the deadline for submission of testimony online? Um, I think... Well, we know there's some hearings in 1st of May, right? 1st? Okay. Yeah, if you can get them in by April 30th, all the better. Um, so, thank you. Um, we will spread these around. As you will recall, there were two different groups on uh, platforms. And we have a, a preamble, I'm sorry, it's getting late. Um, so I've labeled them platform one and two. So look over which ones or both, if you want to sign on to both of them. Those are the only ones that may have any sort of conflicting or different information in them, okay? So thank you all for coming. Really appreciate it and your comments.